Hello, everybody. How are you on today? I pray that many of you all are having a wonderful day. I pray that your life is filled with peace. I pray that you all have had a good weekend. Good things are coming your way. You're going to have greater days, better days. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I'm telling you, for many of you all that have been standing on the promises of God, your label is not in vain. Get ready for that breakthrough. Get ready for what God is about to do in your life. Many of you all that have been standing for the promises of God concerning your marriage, your home, salvation, whatever else it is that you have been believing God for, your labor, I'm telling you, is not in vain. I have come on here to encourage you, get you prepared for what's coming your way, and continue encouraging you to hold on. It is amazing what God is about to do for you and your life, precious people of God. But before I get into that, I want to also thank every one of you all for joining me. Thank you guys so much for your prayers and all your support in the work of God. And all your comments and your testimonies, I enjoy hearing them. They are so encouraging unto me. They build faith and strength it is so awesome what god is doing in our lives in spite of what we have are seeing or in, in spite of what has happened in our life the word of god is what's keeping us moving and growing stronger and stronger and wiser and building our faith we are marching on forward into victory we are marching on hallelujah we are not stopping we have come too far to turn back praise the lord we are continuing to confess the word of god we are continuing to declare the word of god we are continuing to use the sword of the spirit hallelujah which is the word of god we are putting on the whole armor of god by hearing the word meditating on it day and night allowing it to cover our hearts and our mind stand and strong in the word of God that is how we are being armed with the whole armor of God hallelujah and that is why we are walking in that peace that surpasses all understanding you know whatever the devil try to throw our way we are charging on hallelujah we are putting those things behind us casting them out commanding the devil to get behind us i'm telling you the lord is so pleased when we trust in his word he is the host of all heaven's army he is the one that is teaching our hands how to war he is the one that is keeping us strong in our faith because he is the author and the finisher of our faith hallelujah the holy spirit is with us leading and guiding us into all truth it is awesome how god has never left us for his word promises that he would never leave us nor forsake us he says i will be with you in the fire through the floods hallelujah through the storms praise the lord jesus christ he is awesome the word of god is what we are standing upon it is the foundation it is what's causing us to be like that house that's built on a solid rock yes the storms may come yes the winds may blow but we'll still be left standing hallelujah at the end of the day that's what it's all about precious people of god us holding on to the word of god hearing them hallelujah not allowing them to depart out of our out of our mouth keeping our eyes up on them hallelujah not losing our focus keeping our mind stayed upon the lord for whose mind is stayed upon the lord the lord god shall keep them in perfect peace you know with me even standing as well with you guys I'm telling you, the word of God has been keeping me. And the word of God is what shall keep you if you hold on to them. Never let them go. Hallelujah. You know, it's an, it's an awesome thing how the word, something that seems so small, has been keeping us above the storms. Praise the Lord. We thank him for his word. You know, David went through the same things when his whole life looked like it was over everything was burned down to the ground remember the word of god talks about it tells us about it in first samuel chapter 30 ziglag what david were his home were his family and the men that were with him in that land of ziglag it was burned down to the ground by the enemy 
the Amalekites had came in when they were not aware and came in and took their families, came in and took everything and then burned everything down to the ground. Can you imagine what David had to have been feeling to see everything burned down to the ground? That is a sign to anybody that it is over. Oh, but he recovered it all. And if David was able to recover all after it all had burned down to the ground, just think of what is going to happen with you and I, precious people of God. Just think about what is coming our way, how we are recovering all. We're going to look at it, remember, in 1 Samuel. Verse 6, chapter 30, the Bible says that David, first of all, encouraged himself. He was strong in the Lord. He began to encourage himself in the Lord, his God. That's what it's all about, precious people of God. Begin to build your faith in God. Get yourself encouraged by hearing and hearing the promises of God concerning your home, your life, your marriage, whatever you are believing God for. Turn to God and get his answer on that thing. Get his solution to the problem concerning that situation. Find out what God has said about that situation. And we already know what God has said about our home, our life, and our marriage. For the word of God tells us, as it is written, that a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. It is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. Remember, it is a command. God has ordained our marriages to illustrate Christ and the church being one. Where the husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church, hallelujah, his body, and the wife submits unto her husband as unto the Lord, hallelujah, that is what a marriage is about. It is a marriage, it is a lifestyle that represents Christ and the church being one. Where man loved his wife as his own body. As Christ loved the church, who is his body? When he laid down his life for it. Hallelujah. When he saved it. it when he saved his bride and his wife and remained faithful to his covenant. That is exactly what a marriage is. And the Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, has promised to give you all these things pertaining to your life and godliness, a life that is pleasing unto the Lord. Remember, our faith is in God. Remember to remind yourself of these promises. This is what would encourage you. And the Bible says that that is what David began to do, encourage himself in the Lord. You know, when his whole when his when, when his whole life looked like it was over, he turned to the God who he knew was faithful, who had promised that God was able, hallelujah, to do exceeded and abundantly above all that we could never ask or think. He looked to the God who created the heavens and the earth. He looked to the one he knew that can defeat any obstacle, anything, any enemy, any any attack. God was able to deliver him out of it all. And that's what we are called to do. Begin to remind yourself of who God is. And so that's what David began to do. And he found strength. This is what will bring strength and peace. And God, your heart and your mind. Begin to start building your faith up. Hallelujah in God. Building yourself up in your most holy faith. Hallelujah. And, and remember. I want us to kind of skip through. I'm not going to go through the whole story, but I'm just going to kind of skip through and touch on the highlights. And the Bible says what he began to do after he found strength in God. He began to pray. The Bible says in verse 8, then David asked the Lord, should I chase after this band of raiders? Will I catch them? And look at what the Lord said. And the Lord told him, yes, go after them. You will surely recover everything that was taken from you. You know, that's what God is saying about us. Don't just sit by and allow this thing that has come your way to come in and defeat you. Stand your ground. You will recover all. You begin to go after what the devil has stolen from you. Fight for your family. Fight for your loved one. Fight for your spouse. The one God has called you to be one with. The one God has said that you are one flesh with. He have joined you with and whatsoever he have joined together. No man, nothing shall separate. 
This is why it is important that we stand our ground and say, no devil, you is a liar. What God has joined together, you're not coming in to tear apart. I bind your works. The Lord says you will recover all. And that is exactly what happened. The Bible tells us in verse 17, I want to skip down. The Bible says, hallelujah, David and his men rushed in among them and slaughtered them throughout that night and the entire next day until everything, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, until evening and none of the Amalekites it's escaped except 400 young men who fled on camels. David got back everything the Amalekites had taken and he rescued his two wives. The Bible says nothing was missing, small or great, son or daughter, nor anything else that had been taken. Hallelujah. And that is exactly what God is saying about us, precious people of God, when we pursue and go after it all. The Bible says David brought everything back. I'm telling you, the same God that was with David is with us. For he is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Remember, we are called to stand our ground. The Bible tells us, the Lord in fact tells us, you who believe in God, he says, having faith in God, you can say to the mountain, go throw yourself in the sea and it will obey you, but you must really believe that it will happen. Remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. Remember, we are using the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We are commanding and demanding. Hallelujah. We are scattering our enemies when we send forth his word. This is how you will recover all. Remember, the Bible tells us that God sent forth his word and healed them and deliver them out of all their destruction destructions the bible also tells us remember in romans 15 verse 4 that these things were written hallelujah the word of god was written to teach us in verse 4 such things were written to teach us and the scriptures gives us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. You see, the word of God is going to go before us. Hallelujah. Moving and driving out every wicked attack of the enemy. Moving every obstacle, every mountain, every hard place. Hallelujah. Every stone. The word of God shall go before us, causing us to prosper in all that we do. You will see every word of it come to pass in your life. This is a guarantee. Hallelujah. You know... The word of God also tells us, hallelujah, in Mark, remember what he says in Mark chapter four, we talked about it on yesterday. I'm turning there real, real quick. In verse 24, the Lord added, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given. And this is what you want, precious people of God. You want understanding. The Bible says in all that get and get an understanding. For understanding and knowledge is the principal key. The Bible also tells us, the Lord says here, and you will receive even more. See, understanding is what we want. You want to know, hallelujah, what God is instructing you to do. We don't want to, hallelujah, walk in ignorance. The Lord said, I will not see to you being ignorant. The Lord want us to be wiser than the serpent and harmless as the dove. He will lead and guide and direct our path. But you must hear the word, get an understanding of it. And the more you hear, the more understanding will be given. The more you will begin to get encouraged, you will begin to see yourself coming out of that situation. God will begin to bring forth revelation. As you hear the word of God, it will bring forth revelation, knowledge, and truth. Hallelujah. David, when he sought the Lord, God began to calm down or bring forth, send forth wisdom and knowledge and understanding, helping him. And causing him to know what to do, not to give up. You see, this is what happens when we lean not to our own understanding, but acknowledge God in all that we do. He will lead and guide and direct our path. Turning to the word of God, the Lord says, the closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given and you will receive even more. But then he goes on in verse 25 and says this, to those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. 
as we hear the word of God, God is going to lead and guide and direct your path, precious people of God. He's going to show you how to take back what the devil has stolen. He's going to teach your hands how to walk. He's going to show you how to come in and frustrate the plans of the enemy. And he's going to show you how to take the word of God and declare them out of your mouth. Meditate on them day and night. Remember, that's what he says in Isaiah 51. Verse 16, he says, and I have put my words in thy mouth and I have covered thee in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundation of the earth and say unto Zion, thou art my people. God is saying, I've given you my word. I've placed it in your mouth. I'm giving you understanding. I'm going to protect you from your enemies. I'm going to cause you to shape things that are in the heavenly realms and even in the earth. God is the one to guide our footsteps, precious people of God. You are not alone. I know it may seem as at times that you are alone because things come against us back to back. But I'm telling you, the more you hear, the more understanding you will be given. You will begin to learn and know how to fight the good fight of faith. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Remember, be patient. Patient is what you need. Hallelujah. Let patience have her perfect work. Don't look at what you see. You just continue fighting. You just continue declaring the word of God. You know, telling the devil where to go and telling him what is written. Hallelujah. And begin calling forth the good in your life is what you are called to do in this time while you are battling with the enemy. Tell him where to go. Hallelujah. That's what David had to do, basically. You know, we're not fighting flesh and blood enemies like they fought. We are fighting principalities and wicked spirits that are in high places. So we take the word of God now. Our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. Pulling down strongholds, hallelujah. Bringing into captivity every thought that would that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Or that would try to stop and stand in the way of what God has promised you concerning your home. Or that loved one that you are believing God to bring out. You have to command and demand that they be loose. Whatsoever we loose on this earth, the word of God tells us will be loosed in heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth, the Lord Jesus Christ says will be bound in heaven. You know, we binding up the devil, hallelujah. When we tell him where to go, using the word of God, which is the sword, hallelujah, of the spirit. And so no, we're not, we're not actually fighting flesh and blood like David and them did. They were fighting men who were being used by the enemy. But of course, we don't fight people. We are fighting in the spirit realm and on our knees in our prayer closet, using the word of God, keeping ourselves strong in the Lord, keeping our minds renewed, hearing the promises day and night. Hallelujah. Reminding ourselves of what God says. The word of God says, this is how you'll make your own way prosper. And have great success. This is how you will be able to do according to all that God is, is commanding you to do. Keep hearing the word of God so you have understanding. And walk in wisdom and faith. And be in control of that situation. And taking your authority against the enemy. You know, it's time to make a switch. And turn in your life, precious people of God. By removing the darkness and calling forth the light. Remember, when you got a life. When you see your life being filled with chaos and thorns and thistles and troubles, it's time to uproot them and start planting the word of God, which is seed. Hallelujah. If you want to reap a better harvest, remember, it's by sending out the word of God. What happened in the beginning when everything was dark and empty and void? Where the Lord sent forth his word. He spoke, let there be light. And it was. Hallelujah. And we are called to be in his image and in his likeness. Remember, we are called to imitate Christ, the Bible says, in everything. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. In everything and even walk in love, but we also walk in his power. Hallelujah. And in the power of his might. We are called, hallelujah, to be imitators of Christ Jesus. We are ambassadors of Christ. Hallelujah. We are in the earth to subdue. Hallelujah. And have dominion over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means harm us. The Lord 
God says, I'm putting my words in your mouth. You are shaking things in heaven and in earth. You are causing things to happen. You are calling forth those things that be not as though they were. The Bible tells us in the beginning in Genesis, in Genesis chapter 1, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was formless and empty. And darkness covered the deep waters. Remember, that is exactly... Hallelujah. How God began to create the heavens and earth. Look at what he did. And the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. Hallelujah. And God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came mocking the first day you see god used his word and so forth the bible tells us he just began to just declare his word sending out his word as you continue reading down in that chapter i'm not going to go through it all but we could see how god began to plant things in the earth by sending forth his word and everything he spoke it was so and the lord also is telling you and i to begin to speak the word of God out of our mouth. That marriage, that life of yours. Yes, it may be filled with darkness. And there is emptiness everywhere. Darkness is covering every area look like in your life. But it is time to get the word of God. Which is the seed and the sword of the spirit. And therefore you will begin to drive out wickedness. You will begin to see the harvest come forth in your life. You will begin to overturn darkness. Hallelujah. Overturn the works of the devil. Bring that spouse out of darkness. Begin to restore that marriage again. By spending time in the word of God hearing and declaring and confessing it out of your mouth things are happening you are shaking things in the realm of the spirit you're going to cause things to be in your life as it is in heavenly places as it has been settled and planned for your life since the foundation of the world you are the one to call these things into being you are the one to call them forth they are in the spirit realm. You have to call them to you. Hallelujah. You have to begin to send the word out. That's what brings forth deliverance. It doesn't matter what it looks like. The darkness shall leave. Hallelujah. Remember the Lord God says, have faith in God. You can say to that mountain. You can say to that problem. You can take your authority. In other words, is what he was saying. Because I've given you my name. You are God's people is what he is saying. You are my people. I have given you powers over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall stop you. Nothing shall by any means harm you. That mountain will obey you. That spouse will come out. Declare it. Hallelujah. Declare it, precious people of God. Woman of God as well. Your husband is home. He's coming out of darkness. Hallelujah. He's being who God has called him to be. He's loving you as Christ loved the church. You see, speaking to his spirit, man. Hallelujah. Speaking those things that be not as though they are. Raising them up from the dead. Saying with you, man of God. Speak over your wife. Declare who she is. Hallelujah. By faith. Command that mountain and that devil to get out. Praise the Lord and begin to call forth the good in your life and in your home and in your marriage. Turn the darkness off and turn the light on. Hallelujah. You know, we bind the works of the devil. We're not giving up. We're going to continue using the sword of the spirit and driving out the enemy. As it is written, the Bible tells us, a man shall leave his mother and father and be joined unto his wife. And the two are united into one. They shall be one. Hallelujah. That marriage shall illustrate Christ and the church being one. You declare it every day and command it to be done. Command that heart to be softened because it's the word of God. It is written. Remember in Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 25 through 27, God says, I'm washing them. Hallelujah. With pure water from all filth and all idols. Hallelujah. And that God is taking out of them that heart of stone and giving them the heart of flesh, putting in him 
putting in them his spirit and causing them to walk in his ways. You begin to declare what's, wi what's written every day. Devil, I bind your works as it is written. Hallelujah. My spouse walking in that in godliness and walking in the spirit and being who God has called them to be. I command it to be done in Jesus name. I call it forth now. I bind your works, Satan. I command you to go. You see, using your authority. Hallelujah. Demons will obey you. Yes, they may try to fight. It may be a struggle. There may be a test of your faith, but stand your ground. Remember what it looked like when Abraham was being tested. It looked like that it wasn't going to ever be a promise that would come forth in his life that God had promised him. Oh, but I'm telling you, Abraham didn't give up. He was tested. The Lord spoke to him through an angel and commanded that Abraham lay down, give up and sacrifice Isaac. I'm sure Abraham was wondering, oh Lord, but the Bible says that he trusted God. So he was tested to the end. God wanted to see, would he still believe him? Even if that meant Isaac had to die and God would still bring him back from the dead. And Abraham believed God. He was willing to sacrifice Isaac on the altar, believing that God still was going to bring forth his promise. God was testing his faith. And so you may be tested to the very end where it looked like all hell is coming loose and breaking loose in your life. But stand your ground because I'm telling you, that breakthrough is right around the corner. God is, is you're being tested. God just want to see, do they really believe? Even when things are, are actually showing or looking like it's the opposite. Will you still believe? Hallelujah. Even when you haven't heard from that spouse or, or when there has been a divorce, are you still saying it is written? What God has joined together, no man could separate. Are you still saying, Lord God, I thank you that you're taken out of them as you promised that heart of stone and giving them the heart of flesh? Lord God, I thank you. Your, your promises are still yes and amen. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. You're not a man that you should lie. Neither the son of man that you should repent. Whatever you promised, Lord God, you're going to bring it to pass. You see, God is, that's all it's about. That's why trials come, to test your faith, to see who really believes. You know, like I said, you know, in the past, it's easy to believe when everything look right. Yes, it's easy to say, oh, God is moving. Yes, because I see this and I see that. But see, that's not true faith. Faith believes in spite of what is being seen. They believe based off of the word of God. That's what God is looking for. Who believe his word? And that's what Abraham was being tested by. Do we believe God's word? God was looking at that. Do he, do he believe what I said? See, God's word is above his name. God even honors his own word. God is looking for us to honor his word. See his word, hallelujah, as being the final say. Seeing his word being exalted above anything, anything we see. That's when God will bless you and you'll receive that promise. Hallelujah. Precious people of God, get ready. Men of you I know are strong in your faith. Men of you have been holding on. I just love it. You know, when I hear your comments, men of you all even, you know, declares or, or, or comment how you're going through. But a lot of you say, you know, but I'm still holding on. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I'm still standing strong. That's what you call a warrior. That's what you call, hallelujah, a strong man, a woman of God. That's what it's all about. And remember, if your faith is not strong enough, it will be the moment you begin to hear it. The moment you begin to confess them. The moment you begin to take heed to what God has said. Hold on to them. But begin to declare them day and night. They will get in your heart. You will be given more understanding and strength and grace. Peace will come. You will begin to stand. Hallelujah. And you know, precious people of God, I'm going to pray with you guys, but I just want you to know this here. God is faithful who promised. Hold on. You are almost there. You are almost there. You know, it is such a joy when we obey God. Obedience always brings joy. 
Oh, hallelujah. That's what it's all about. Being obedient. For obedience is better than sacrifice. And so now I'm going to pray. Father God, I thank you for everyone that has joined me on today. Thank you for every faithful standard. Lord God, thank you for giving them the power and the strength and the grace to fight the good fight of faith and bring forth your glory. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Your glory shall be seen in our life. Hallelujah. Your word, hallelujah, Lord God, will not return back void. Thank you, Lord God, that every promise is being fulfilled. Thank you, Lord God, that every spouse is coming out. They are brought out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God, they are being saved and delivered and set free even now while I'm praying. Thank you, Lord God, we are shaking things in the heavens. Oh God, we are causing things on this earth to be as it is, oh God, as it is written. Oh God, by confessing and using the sword of the spirit. Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God. Weeping only endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Thank you, Lord God, for covering us with the whole arm of God. By calling us, oh God, unto you, giving us understanding, holding us in the palms of your hands, walking with us through the waters, through the fires and the floods. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Nothing shall by any means harm us. We call forth light in our lives and in our marriages right now and command darkness to be gone. We call forth husbands to be joined unto their wives right now in Jesus' name. And wives to be joined unto their husbands. In the mighty name of Jesus, we call you out of whatever dark place you are in. And we call you forth in the mighty name of Jesus. We command death to leave your lives, leave your minds. Every prodigal now in Jesus' name. Every chain to be broken. Every yoke in the mighty name of Jesus to come off of you. We bind the works of the devil. We command God's will to be done done in Jesus name on this earth as it is in heaven. We bind everything that will try to hinder and stop the plans and the purposes of God from coming forth. We cast you out in the mighty name of Jesus. Get behind us, Satan. You have no power over God's people. We come with the word of God that shall be forever in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, we give you all the praise. All the glory and all the honor in Jesus' holy name. And all the people of God says amen, amen, and amen. Keep standing strong, precious people of God. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Keep holding on. Keep tuning in to the teachings. Keep surrounding yourself with other believers. Keep yourself encouraged. Remember as David did. And go to war every day till you see the breakthrough. Hallelujah. Remember that God loves you and I love you too. And until next time. Bye-bye.